of the morning it is 44 uh it's quarter to to 11 in south africa and we are live big day today big fixture today we on forexfactory.com and you know what time it is it's nfp nfp so as per standard nfp procedures we won't really be getting into any trades prior to the news release it's expected to come out at half past two south african time that's about half eight new york time and uh it's gonna be a good one it's gonna be a good one um we can see how we've been doing so we're just gonna wait for it usually nfp is a two-stage movement it's a two-stage movement event where you get an initial price move that isn't necessarily the real price move 30 minutes after the news has been released we can now look or anticipate to fade that movement and join the real movement but enough on that we're gonna take a quick look at the dxy gain our bearings just to see where we add so long with it and to try to anticipate what could potentially happen so looking at the dxy right now we can already see we just took um buy side liquidity those two relative equal highs kind of suspect we took that out on the daily chart price then proceeded to push up slightly Let me just open this up price proceeded to push up a bit slightly and then shot back breaking that low over there you saw some displacement and as you can see we have a fair value gap over there where are my tools now there they are perfect so we're just gonna add a rectangle there just to give us a visual idea of the zone bearish fair value gap okay as per the model, it suggests that these lows could be revisited. As we see there, there are relative equal lows there as well. That could be revisited if we continue with the bearish sentiment. We'll then see a move to the downside. That will give us or put us in a risk-off scenario. Risk-off is where we see the DXY drop, meaning investors will be fleeing the dollar, which give them a relatively higher return as opposed to risk assets and that's exactly what they'll seek out they'll seek out risk assets for a larger yield back test it and see whenever the dxy is falling all foreign currencies are pushing up which is currencies that are not the dollar so your euro gbp will be buying if the dxy is selling your gbp i'm not even speak on the yen pairs but you get the idea if the dxy is falling i'm looking to take a buys in indices but we we're not going to get a, too ahead of ourselves prior to nfp we're just taking a look see getting our bearings to see what could possibly pay out let's go down to the 4h time frame 4h 4h time frame just to get another look see where we at as you can see, pushed up, pushed up, broke that low. Could even say that low there as well, but we broke that. Fair value gap exists there. That's the daily fair value gap. We just tapped into it, and we could potentially see price visiting here, or even as low as down there. But we have a couple downside targets that we are looking to, to target. Now, let's think of or consider a scenario where our bearish idea is invalidated and price moves up and becomes bullish. This daily fair value gap could become an inversion fair value gap, and then that would set us up for a movement to the upside. Mm, what is this? There's a DXY now. DXY, is that it? Yes, sir. This we could see this turn to an inversion for a value gap and then take us up. 
target these highs there. Ultimately, those highs there and there and there. So we have buy side liquidity resting above us. If we continue with our bearish idea, we can anticipate that low being tapped into that low over there. If our bearish bias is invalidated and we turn to become bullish, we'll look to this to turn into an inversion for value gap and then we'll enter along and then target the buy side liquidity on the opposite side. That's the current situation on the DXY. Let's look to the euro to see what the euro could potentially present us with. Okay, euro USD. We're going to start on the daily time frame just to gain our bearings, see what's going on at the current moment. As you can see, we just took our sell side. On the daily time frame, took out that sell side liquidity and then price pushed to the upside. Break off structure there, and as well as leaving, leaving us a fair value gap in the displacement leg. So I'm just gonna mark that off. Okay, fair value gap, buy side inefficiency, sell side imbalance. Or a busy or a bearish, I mean bullish for value gap. As the model suggests, we could see a revisit of the buy side liquidity on the daily chart just there. And now let's go to the four hour to see what exactly could potentially happen. Okay, four hour time frame, here we are. We in a daily fair value gap, which also is a four hour fair value gap. Order block there. Okay. Okay. But on the four H time frame, as you can see here, we pushed up. We broke structure there. Broke structure. So this is hinting that structure could potentially be bearish now. We'll just have to wait and see. You will notice that 4H fair value gap over there. I'll just mark that out, my brother. 4 hour fair value gap over there. I'll just mark that out as a bearish one. We'll just be watching to see what happens. Let's go to the 60 minutes. Okay, M60. Okay, 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 okay. Break of structure with energetic displacement to the downside. Now we'll look for price to come back up and then we'll take the trade from there. I'll measure out my fib from there. And then let me switch out the template projection fib. All right, that daily or that 4 H fib value gap region kind of comes into play with the optimal trade entries, um, as you can see there. Then if we hit that, we have these relative equal lows there. So we could see a sell set up if the DXY pushes to the upside. And we could see a bullish setup if the DXY pushes to the downside. So we'll just see what happens. We'll see what happens. We're not really looking into entering any positions prior to the news announcement. British pound, US dollar. It's taking a look, see. Mm. Hit that liquidity, hit that buy side liquidity. Let's go to the 15 real quick. Okay, 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 okay. cancel. All right. What time was that? That was like about two. So, came in. Okay. Came in, had a bit of a bearish movement down. Took the sell side. Price shot up, came back, reverted. So now, 
let's see if relative to this price range are we in premium or discount and then we'll start working our way from there we had a bullish movement broke of structure after taking sell side liquidity now here we are we're still in premium if we were to take sales i mean buys on this time frame i'd be looking to buy right over there right over there within the ote zone that's where i personally would be looking to take an entry by the m15 all right bullish by the m15 and then i would take my tp would be right up here take that liquidity right up there that's what i'd be looking to do something to the manner of this by there Take my 35. Um, stop is a bit large, but you know. Two is the 2.8 ratio, risk reward ratio. Uh, but ultimately, you know the vibes. So we'll be looking to check out these highs over there. You know? But we'll see what it provides us with. Like I said, we're not really looking to take trades prior to the news release. But this would be a good case to just study, just to watch and anticipate, or rather just, you know, study how price delivers. That's the situation on GBPUSD. Hmm. GJ. GBPJPY. Let's see. GBP JPY. It took buy side, pushed up, dropped, broke structure, opened the fair value gap via energetic displacement. Price traded up, worked into that region, and now it looks like we're respecting that daily fair value gap. As per the module suggests, we're looking for sales. There's a low there, also, you know, where the fair value gap is. And then there's another low over there. So for this one, I think sales would be the most appropriate thing. Sales. Mm. Let's look down to the 4H for more, more evidence. When you go down to the 4H, as you can see, you saw some energetic displacements. We didn't really yet break this low. Not really yet. So I'm not quite satisfied. But you look here on the H4. Fair value gap high. Fair value gap low. Inside that region right now. Relatively close here. Quite suspect. And fair value gap there at the bottom. Let's go to the 60. H. I mean M60 time frame mm. yeah 15 mm. it's gonna people trade this one and we'll see from there I don't really have a, a call on that one it is what it is let's look at the Nasdaq NAS 100, you know, NAS 100. One day time frame. Sipping on some coffee. Just clear out all of that. NAS 100, he pushed up, came up from a fair value gap on the daily time frame. Bought that hard. After we took some sell side, took sell side liquidity on the daily time frame, 
shot up created the fair value gap with energetic displacement price traded back into the fair value gap and then we pushed up looks like this volume imbalance there was our current draw on liquidity but also on the weekly time frame you can see here weekly fair value gap what we currently are drawing up into let's just put that there and let's put a magnet so that we know you know that magnet there that's what's drawing price to the upside so let's go back to the one day okay so we have our bearings you can see that we have draws of liquidity on the upside when you look at the daily time frame we have this very nice very very nice fair value gap there on the downside you know nice daily fair value gap would be nice if price could just drop down into that and then shoot up but of course you don't know what price will do so we'll watch we can see volume has been decreasing can see the reduction in size of the daily candles and we quite overextended but we'll see what happens I'm really interested in this one because it has the order block you know this beefy beefy daily candle there let's go to the four hour just to take another look look see yup four edge the value gap over there it will be a nice one. How, how far, far down is that from where we are currently? That is about... Look, you forgot how to measure, but <laughs> anyway. Um, it's 186 points. Not too bad, not too bad. But it's closer to go up there. So we'll see what price decides to do. 60 minute time frame. Okay, that's where we're currently at. Number 60. Alright, alright, alright. Okay. Asian session lows. We took out the highs from Asian session. Asian session is uh, 6 to about 3. That's the way I look at it. Well, let me just say till 2 from when the London session started. Between Asian session and when like London started, started, started. So, uh, as you can see here, till 2 a.m. I'll bring that down. So, we just we took out the highs from the from Asian session. Oh, my God. No, don't open that up. Let me make this... Pardon me. What? Windows, blah, 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 blah. Don't reopen, close. Anyway, where was I? Here, yes, I, uh, here I am. I'm going to change the color of this just so that we have... Um, an idea. That's a nice color. I'll make it orange. For Asian session. Let's make that orange. So, Asian session, Asian range rather. Let's go to M15. Break that down even further. So, you can break that down even further. Okay, so here we are 2 a.m. Okay, so we just purged up into like the buy side from Asian from the Asian session. We're gonna see what price does. We're gonna see what price does. Um we'll see closer to the time at half past eight. 
for me to be confident with buys, I'd be looking for price to push below the 8.30 open and below the midnight open. For me to be confident with buys, I'd be looking for price to shoot above the midnight open and above the 8.30 open. I use power of three. For those unfamiliar with it, just let me know in the comment section and I'll drop a video um, speaking on the power of three. Apart from that though, I think that'll be it for now. I'll get back to you all closer towards NFP and um, yeah, let's stay safe. Thank you so much for your time. If you aren't tapped in with us, be sure to check us out on Twitter. This is where I post, you know, I post charts, some of my trades, all of that. We took a nice, nice, lovely buy on the NASDAQ yesterday. I took some partials off, but it, it cheated as well. It treated us quite, quite, quite well. I tweet about my trades and such, give some analysis. This is the vibe we took yesterday. It didn't come back to put us in by the buy limit. I would have preferred to take that for value gap, but it's all good. Use the power of three. Yesterday, this was the Asian range. Uh, during uh, New York, se I mean uh, London session, we purged to the downside to take out the sell side liquidity, and then come uh, New York session, we came back into the range, opened a fair value gap. That was the M15 fair value gap, an M15 fair value gap. But that shot up weekly drawn liquidity. It was bullish, and yeah, lovely trade. Be sure to check us out on the Twitter account. You know, be sure. And uh, yeah, let's stay safe, y'all. Thank God for the skill.